Hey everyone, welcome to today's day trading recap for Friday, April 23rd. Hope everybody had a good week. Uh, ending the week on a small green day plus $137. Now that's a fall from where we hit yesterday of over 3,000, but that's okay. A couple things. Um, one, I, I went in today making sure I was going to keep my position size super small. For one, we were trading the zero day, uh, days to expiration that move really quickly, have some serious theta decay to them. Uh, number two, based on yesterday's big winning day, came into this with the mindset of I didn't want to have kind of a euphoric mindset of of giving it all back, you know, putting on a big bunch of big size uh, because I kind of in the mindset of everything I touched turned to gold kind of thing. And so I, I went in just wanting to be very, very cautious of that, being aware of my mindset. And then three is Friday. And, you know, Friday, I like to keep things a little bit smaller and kind of be done early. So I only took a few trades. Uh, Mighty 90s did have two trades, two nice winners, NVIDIA for plus 330, MU for plus 224. So we'll go over these trades and I'll come back and recap the, uh, the entire week, a really good week overall. And then uh, two runners today. AMD minus 120, SQ minus 297, so plus 137 net on the day, no pairs trades. So let's take a look at these and then we'll come back and recap the week. Starting with NVIDIA. So NVIDIA was a, a nice little mighty 90 that we took. And I kind of managed this one a little bit like a runner. So you could have, um, I could classify it as a runner, but but really I entered as a mighty 90 and so that's that's where I'll classify it. Uh, I had this big push up, started to pull back. Now this bar ended up green, uh, and so this volume bar is green, but at one point it was red down here. And so on this pullback, I was looking at it as a mighty 90, got in right here and got a push up, scaled out, got out of uh, three quarters of my position at that point, kind of chopped around, chopped around. And I think I got out of my last piece. Uh, I think it was right here when it started to pull down. So nice uh, $330 winner there. My other mighty 90 was MU. Uh, MU had this nice push up into this pivot with volume, got short right here, came down. I had my order to close half about right down there. It didn't quite get there, bounced up. I thought I was going to take, ended up taking a loss on this after I had a chance to get out of some. Uh, but it played nicely, chopped around, chopped around, and finally rolled over, ended up getting out of my last piece right there. Uh, for a plus 224 on the MU trade. On to the runners. The two runners we did were AMD and SQ. So AMD, uh, AMD was uh, was one that we were actually talking about right here uh, of potentially getting long on a pullback. I didn't do it because it didn't quite fit my criteria and I'm trying to be uber strict on my rules. I know some, some folks in the community got in right here and caught this nice bounce in AMD. So that's beautiful. Uh, I was looking for a potential reversal. So I was looking for a break of this bar here that had the big volume. Uh, it did break it right there. And so when it bounced back up a little bit, I got short, did roll over. I got out of half my position on just on that little move with these zero DTE options. They, uh, they bring you some profits quick when they move in your direction. Uh, and then it just kind of bounced, chopped around and then pushed up. And I ended up just closing it out there because everything was looking pretty bullish. Uh, so I ended up taking a loss of 120 on that one. And then Square. Don't trade Square too much, but uh, had a nice little volume spike on the downside. Uh, when it bounced up here, this, this bar ended down here, but it actually bounced up to about right there. And that's where we got short. And this thing just started to flush. Got out of half. I was trying to get out of more, about right down there. It never quite got there. And then it just ripped higher. So when it really started to push higher, cut out of my last piece. And uh, ended up taking a loss after had a decent profit, but no fault of the way it traded. Just it just ripped ripped back up on us. So took a loss on that one. Uh, so net net plus one thirty seven on the day. Let's bring up bring back the sheet, and I'll show you what we did for the week. Uh, really nice week, mostly due to yesterday. But on the mighty ninety front, um, really really encouraged with this of the P and L. Obviously is good plus two thousand. 757 had 11 trades and only one loser only one out of 11 trades were losers in the mighty 90 so over 90 percent win rate fantastic uh on the pairs trades just did one book 239 50 
And then on the runners, booked uh, over $3,500 on 26 trades. Pretty low win rate, but the P&L, like I said, primarily due to yesterday's big performance. Uh, Monday was a good winner. Tuesday was a winner. Wednesday was a loser. Uh, yesterday was the big one. And then today, a little bit of a red day on the runners as well. But net-net, uh, over $3,500. If we took a late look at the summary year-to-date, uh, now we're at uh, over $7,800 on our Mighty 90s, over $1,900 on our pairs trades, over $21,000 on our runners, total over $31,000 in profits year to date. If we take a look at the um, uh, P&L by day of week, uh, you can see every day this week was green, which I love. I love green days. I love green weeks. In fact, going back to Friday, so that's actually six green days in a row. So getting a little mini streak going here. See if we can keep that alive. Uh, and then if you look at the P&L by day, Thursday is starting to run away with it. Uh, you know, obviously thanks to yesterday, but um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three best days of the week so far. So again, small data sample, uh, sample but uh, we'll continue to fill this in as we go and see if uh, we can glean anything from it. I, I do like to, I do feel a lot more comfortable putting on additional size on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, uh, and we'll continue to do so. You know, Fridays, I just, I like to keep my position size small. We're, we're usually trading zero DTE. Monday, it's the first day of the week. I'm just kind of trying to get my juices flowing. Uh, so I'm not really in sync with the market yet. So that's why, that's, that's why I feel Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are, are, are my best days and will continue to be. But we will see if that continues. Uh, and then if, you, if we take a look, quick look at uh, since we've been tracking, which is since the beginning or since the end of August, you can see back on September 14th, we had a week of over 7,000. But that is the only week since we've been tracking that was better than this week. So plus 6,509 on the week and so good stuff and then uh since the end of august total day trading p l over sixty seven thousand. the other thing i was going to mention that i've never really talked about but you know one thing um you know I, i've taken money out of my kind of my income trading accounts but on my day trading i hadn't I hadn't really done that it just been kind of building and so what i've been doing the last couple months is i've been taking money out of the account and I've been doing that for a couple of reasons. One is just, it was getting bigger than, than I needed for the size that I'm trading. And two, I, I think there's a really powerful psychological thing about taking money out of your account. You know, if you just see your money growing in the account, sometimes it, it doesn't seem real. You know, sometimes it just is still kind of like monopoly money. It's just kind of funny money. And it can actually cause you to, to do things that, you know, make make trades or, or up your position size to, to a level you may not be comfortable with. And I think taking the money out on a consistent basis can actually have a powerful psychological effect from the, from the impact that you actually, you actually know it's real, right? You can actually spend it. You actually do that. And, and, and the things that you spend it on are tied to that trading because you know, you know where that money came from. And so, if, if you're not doing that, if you're, if you've had trouble kind of building up an account and then it comes back down, building it up again and it comes back down, think about s systematically starting to take, take money out. I think, I think there's really something to that from a mindset thing. In fact, it's going to be the topic of a podcast coming up on the trade hacker mindset. So look for that at some point in the future. But, uh, but overall, and then, and then when the other thing that I've been talking about and, and thinking a lot about is is really starting to scale up my position size with my day trades. Um, you know, I've, I've done it a couple times kind of sporadically, like I'm going to take a bigger position size on this trade uh, specifically. But uh, for whatever reason, and again, this is a mental block that I'm working through and I'm just kind of sharing it with you because some of you all may be able to relate or benefit from it. But you know, I want to I want to get to the point where you, you can see you know, pretty consistently we're having two, fifteen hundred, two thousand, twenty five hundred dollar weeks, right? Which is great, but I, I really want to get to the point you know where we're having ten, twenty thousand dollar weeks, right? I mean, it's kind of stupid to say who doesn't, right? But what I've what I've found is the current position size that I trade is a very very I'm in my comfort zone, right? It's it's very comfortable for me. The P&L swings that I have are very comfortable to me right now. 
and there's and there's nothing wrong with staying there but at the same time i i want to i want to grow that that comfort zone of mine and so part of that is just incrementally doing it part of it is just getting over the mental blocks that you might have around certain levels of pnl swings and so that's something that i'm i'm really focusing on and and wanting to to work on to to really gradually kind of get these these weekly PNLs up uh, to a significantly higher level on average. So anyway, just some random thoughts uh, that I wanted to share and to kind of get you guys thinking about your own trading and, and how it might help you. So hopefully that helps. Uh, we will be streaming Monday through Thursday live uh, next week. We will be offline on Friday. Had something come up that I have to, that I have to be at in the morning. And so... Uh, Monday through Thursday, and then we've also posted the full schedule for May in the live stream room. The only the only two days we're offline in May is one Memorial Day because it's a holiday. The markets are closed, and then we're also going to take off the Friday before uh, Memorial Day because trading is probably going to be light, not the best day trading conditions, and so we're just going to uh, be offline that day as well. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend, and we will talk to you next week. See ya.